welcome people so I am gonna can my first set up tomato today and I'm gonna be showing you what I do and how I achieve the canning process um, there are a few equipment I did purchase and so I'm gonna be showing that um, and where I got them from um, just to mention I do not have my own farm I'm not a homesteader I I'm used to buying stuff in bulk and so I did that for my tomato normally I would preserve them in the freezer or I'll put a little bit in the fridge and I use it as I move along um, I did realize that there were many people within my background that you know would can the Italian way or the Amish way and this is one skill I actually wanted to learn and so I decided to embark on that and I'm gonna move through the journey with you and if you do have any questions you can put in the link below you can put in the comments below but it's important to also follow the approved way of canon I did some research for my background um, I wouldn't say there is zero canon method there are canning methods that we use for example um, the recipe for shito it's canon technically it's canon technically we just do not put it in a water bath or a pressure cooker um, the method and the technique is a little bit different however it's still canon um, I'm from Ghana we do have different ways to preserve things commonly it will be salt in um, which generations and generations have used and it's gone a long way to help them we also smoke fish meat and all of that but when it comes to like canning fruits like tomato we just use the tomato. so here's a box of tomato I got from restaurant depot I'm not sure how many pounds but that's what I have um, normally I'll just blend this and freeze it and have three of them in the fridge for you know fresh use for any recipes or such but again we're gonna be trying um trying canning and so i do have a bowl of water here what i'm just gonna do is take the core out and then score the bottom and i purchased a pressure canner it also doubles as a water bath and so you can water bath um tomato and you can also pressure can the method i'm going to be using in this video is water bath you can do whatever you want to do just make sure you follow the um required guidelines just so your food is safe um so i'm gonna crank the heat right up on this one and i'm gonna cover it so it could get boiling and that's what we're gonna be using i feel that almost halfway past halfway i already have water boiling here um this is the largest port i have if you do have a stew port you can use that so i'm gonna use this i'm gonna be using this for you can see me right there <laughs> i'm gonna be using this to to blanch the i'm gonna be using this to blanch the tomato so there we go so i'm gonna just go ahead and sharpen my knife a little bit just so it's easier to um, move through the process when i start um i'm not gonna be using lemon juice as a preservative or citric acid i watched different videos and i decided that i wouldn't be using that um so yeah I do have little space here and so I'm gonna try my best to you know utilize the space I have and the equipment I have you do not have to get a pressure canner I'm gonna be washing my hands while I talk to you um, you do not have to get a pressure canner if you do have a big stream bowl you can use that um, I think I'm gonna be doing more pressure canning in the future and what about preservation of food and so that's why I went ahead to purchase that and that is the only that is the biggest um pot i have i do have larger ones but i do not have any other one that it's you know has depth for me to what about my stuff and so there we go i'm gonna be using this right here for just to take the core out and so use whatever way works for you so this is what I'm gonna take here you see what I mean by color 
my expectation is to have like a redder color than this but again this is what we got oh I, I so the knife is sharp i forgot it just went through too much but i'll just do something like here and it's gonna go into the boiling water to blanch it i'm gonna reduce the water because i don't want it to uh, i do not want it to overboil the goal is just to remove the skin and i mean this process is different for me because when i make stews with my tomato i do not remove the seeds i do not remove the skin and so i will see how this process goes but for now i would just do what i think fits best i'm just gonna make sure i sterilize my jar and the utensils i'm gonna be using and so this is how i'm taking the core out i've seen people take out the seed and this is like a whole project people are back on but normally even with store-bought um tomato and how do i say that normally when i buy canned tomato i prefer just to get tomato paste i sometimes get crushed tomato or diced tomato just to have an extra you know um an extra like food on my shelves for preservation sake and also for emergencies i mean people have different reasons why they preserve food this way i know for some people they wouldn't be used to bulk shopping but to me this is not even bulk shopping it's just the only thing that is new here is the fact that i'm canning and it's something i'm giving a try so So I wouldn't be removing the seeds. I think I'm gonna take the skin off and I'm also gonna blend it. Some people had have like a mashy tube just to mash it while it cooks down. I wouldn't do that. Um, when I'm making, I'm gonna be using this canned tomato for recipes like jollof and stew. That is like a staple in my house. And so that's what I'm gonna be using that for. If you realize it has like an imperfection right here, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna cut that out a little bit and i bought this tomato exactly last week and so it's been sitting here for a week and i did that intentionally because it was so hot there when i got there and so this time around it's ripened a little bit and i didn't get the tomato in season obviously it's winter i think i'm backing on this journey i would be like no more timely in terms of like getting tomatoes and season and so this is all new to me i just went for a quick look on these and other snacks besides the what they tag you i have about the preservation of the scent is water um tomato has a high acidity and so you can go ahead and get tomato after it later on like an 
extra going it's almost to the brim and so we're just gonna end this here and just wait for it to like blanch for about two to five minutes and once i see the skin i'm popping off a little bit i'm just gonna sterilize and clean this right here and pick them up so i'm gonna get a nice back running so I'm gonna be showing the tools. Um, here is a jar lifter, just to pick up um, the whole jar in and from the water bath. I couldn't get a good video of the other tools, but I'm gonna be using a pop, um, a bubble popper to take out the, the bubbles, a funnel, and we have a magnetic tool to pick and lift up the, the lids. Um, those are the ones I just used in the video. tomato blanching um it's taking some time i just covered it so the process goes a little bit faster i'm gonna be very quick i'm gonna wash this quart um cotton jars with hot soapy water and i'm gonna sterilize them and the pressure counter which is acting as our water bath today so that's that um I believe, so I got the regular mouth, these are regular mouth, my wider mouths, so yeah, um, so that just fell, let me get that, mm. alright, so I'm gonna just wash it really quickly, shake everything off, and by the time it's done blanching and I take the skin out, I should go ahead and blend it. So at this point, I'm just opening the cans to wash them up and sterilize them, get them ready to sterilize. Um, it's important to know how to store your canned produce. So you have to store them in a cool, dry place. Um, just make sure it's cool, there's not um, increased heat or temperature because that could actually decrease the shelf life of your produce. And I'm going to keep the box right here because my canned produce is going to sit in there and that's how I'm going to store it. So that's that so at this point i'll just rent in i picked up one um hand sponge i wanted to use i had mold on it so i threw it out and took a new sponge so i'm showing you that right there and i mentioned i was gonna wash it with soapy water that's a lie i actually cleaned it without even noticing i was cleaning it um and i was just renting and renting about I guess the streamline of the entire process and wishing I had a bigger pot to blanch the entire tomato in one set and not in badges. But editing it now and looking back at the whole process, it wasn't difficult. Um, there was a lot of satisfaction in knowing that I was able to do this and it's going to be, you know, good for a year. I do not regret it now. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> I'd also share the video of when I had shopped for all of these and things I got. I got some food grade back here from Home Depot and I put my 25, 25 pounds sugar in there. I have a Milo bag I ordered from Amazon but I didn't use that because I just didn't like the idea of the fact that the bowl was cylindrical or circular and the Milo bag was kind of like not shaped that way. So I just didn't use that. It's gonna go well. Alright. Make this. Last 
jars. I'm gonna drop it and see. Hmm. Is it? It's looking cloudy. I'm not sure, but I think it's the top. It's the vapor, so I wouldn't mind. I'm gonna drop this into the bath to sterilize it. I'm looking for the thong to so pick it up. So that's all. Cool. So that's how it's gonna go. This is how you use it. You pick it up and then drop it into the bag. It doesn't seem like it's gonna stand. It's just floating, so that's what we're gonna do. Sterilize it. Um, Alright, this water is hot. Just it in there. It's a food process to back on. Wow. I know when you all do this, but lately. Uh, I have been into like homestead videos, um, pantry, different ways to preserve food, and I've just been inspired by a lot of people, and especially one lady, her name is Becky, she has a YouTube channel called Acre Homestead, yeah, I just laugh every day she does, so. Alright, I believe it's 12. 10 could fit into. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for staying. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like and share with someone who might be interested in this kind of video. Um, I'd like to know your comments and what you think. So what I'm doing right now is submerging the, the glass jar so the water could fill it up and it's sterilized like, you know, your own. Um, I'm trying to make space for the last two, but it wouldn't fit. <sighs> oh yeah, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. Um, what next? At this point, I just have to like work faster because everything else is like on. Um, I'm gonna have a dish just a little bit for it to sterilize and I'm gonna take the core out of the remaining tomato. I don't think I'm gonna get the space to do everything. We might have to do like one more batch and then it will be done. Just core the bottom of the tomato, take the core out this way. And then score. So that's that. After I'll clean my blender off and I'm putting it in right here. It's a bit foreign to me because I've never had to like take the skin out of my tomatoes when I use them, but the all the recipes I saw. You take the skin and the seeds out. I'm not taking the seeds out, just the skin. Just so I have like a much smoother texture consistency. And these tomatoes look beautiful. So, um, back in my country, you know, when you were cooking and, and an elderly was there and you had to like, you know, cut um, tomato. So imagine you cut the core out this way. They kind of go, hey, stop wasting food. So I feel like I'm wasting food with taking the pills off. But I'm going to use the pill for something else. 
I could freeze it, I could save it. And when I'm making stew, I could use that as something. So, ooh, that just dropped in there. Okay, that was gonna come off. Like, just wrap off like, hey, I'm here. I'm wrapping off. You don't have to work, but I have to pull some of them. So again, I'm taking the pill off. I might not get 100% of the pill off, but that's totally fine. Um, I don't know. It's a lot of tomato, so I might have one with the pill on, one without the pill on. I just don't know. At this point, I'm done taking off the pill from the skin. I keep saying pill from the skin from the tomato. And I am gonna blend it and technically pour it into the sterilized jar so it could go into the water bag and when i say pill i mean skin the skin of the tomato so yeah that's what she's saying there and just blend in stuff and get it into the water bag i already have this blended wait sterilization of the tools the jars just to make sure it's safe to use and i was having trouble lifting out the whole jars from the water bath and i eventually figured out what could work best it was the tongue um that's a different tool i used later on in the video to pick them up but pretty much i had a difficult time using the over here and here I'm picking up the lids. The lids were all the way at the bottom, the rim all the way at the bottom. So I had to use like um, the wooden spoon to help me pick them up. So here I'm blending, transferring, moving stuff from one port into the blender. I leave about an inch before it's filled up. I close it tightly. It's what a button so you can close it tightly. And I do have the lid on, the rim on. One thing I missed here, but I went back to fix it, is to wipe the mouth of the jar with white vinegar. So I did that and just to ensure that it's safe to water bath before doing that. And that's pretty much that. Again, you do not need all these tools to get this process going. What about this the simplest way? You can use like a very big pot. Um, one way to make the bubbles escape, you can just use any tool you might have. It could be a spoon, a wooden spoon, and you could also gently tap the jar and that would allow the bubbles to escape. It's important to note that the temperature of the substance in the jar, and in this case the tomato, needs to be at equilibrium with the water bath which is boiling. You cannot put a cold jar into a hot water bath it's just gonna break something is gonna go wrong um so yeah that's what i'm showing here right now so after my first batch i threw that water away i started all over with lukewarm water and i placed the remaining jar into the water bath and i made the temperature rise up with that and i'm boiling this for 45 minutes to an hour so i used quartz here and that is the mason jars i used um the remaining ones couldn't well they were just like little left so i picked up three or four um pints and i filled them up with the tomato paste so that's what i'm showing you right here and that's how we ended the next batch of tomatoes so the moment of truth um it's pretty hot i mean my windows are like steamy i'm gonna be careful lift this up and place it in a safe place i'm also gonna reduce the I'm gonna reduce the, the stove to low just so I could safely pull this up. And we're gonna try these 
tongs to see if it works if not we are just gonna go with these i don't think this will work but we're gonna try these right here and just see how that goes and i have this right here um the tomato thin and that's where i'm gonna place it so um once i'm done all right see the sound see the sound it's making that shows you that it's it's um properly canned initially it gave like a follow empty sound i'm not sure if that makes sense but i'll explain that in details but this is actually working and i'm holding it firmly so it doesn't slip like it was before this is almost like slipping up but we're gonna make it That's from like boiling the tomato, some you know, spill from the boiling, and I'll put this right here. But it's hot, all right? It's hot, but we have two, four, six, eight, and we still have a little bit more. And I'm gonna use pints, and I'm gonna use three um, quarts, and the rest are gonna be pints. If you do remember, we had filled this up all the way to about that mark, that line right there, but it reduced, and I'm gonna throw this out. I've said that and so yeah let's see how that goes so something went wrong with the last batch um, I'm not sure um, I just turned out the stove the only thing I can think about is the fact that one of the glass broke or I didn't seal it properly but I'm not too worried about it so I'm just gonna go ahead and like check and see what I did wrong. I have about 20, no, about 18 minutes to that one hour, 45 minutes mark so I can turn it off. So we're gonna see what we did wrong and then we'll take it from there. I'll let you guys know. So as I mentioned, I was gonna show you. Um, again, it's looking like a bowl of soup right here. And that's because something went wrong. I just don't know if you know, let me know. But if you look closely to that corner right there, it's a broken um, mason jar. It could be a temperature difference. It could be, I just don't know what I did wrong again. I'm not gonna guess, but that's the truth about it. You know, someone could have hit this and said, oh, it went well. Yeah, I'm not about that life. It went well, but I mean, we had one broken glass. So, oh, right there, see? see whoa interesting all right but that's fine it's not a biggie all right all right so we are all done um i took out the broken mason jar um point of correction it actually broke from the bottom so i can't tell what really went wrong probably i didn't seal this correctly i don't know it could also be a manufacturing defect i mean but everything in there was sealed, so nothing was contaminated. Um, here is the... <laughs> Hold on, let me clean it. Here's what it looks like. I'm gonna throw everything out and make sure I dispose of the glass properly so it's safe. And here is the goodness we just made. Um, we're able to get... This is four, eight, ten, ten quarts, and then three pints. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off. This is still hot, so this was the first batch. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the rim. There's no need to leave the rim on there, and I'm gonna test it to see if it was properly sealed. I still have more time to let it cool down completely. Um, and just make sure this is, you know, safe canon before I store it. I'm also going to date it with today's date. And this is good for like a year. And it should be fine. So, yeah, that's it. And um, these are, I already showed this, but this is the skin of the tomato and some of the seeds that I didn't throw away. I just blended it. And I'm going to use this for stew, probably for like jollof or something. But right here.
in the meantime i'm just gonna take off the rim of the first one all right it's not coming off for some reason it's not so i'm just gonna let it cool down or is that what well, one came off and the test is that you are supposed to be able to you're, you're supposed to be able to lift it up by the lid without it falling apart and it's a little scary but i would have to test it and try it all right there we go all right this is scary because i don't want to drop this so i'm holding it and it's not like dropping um it's still hot so i don't want to rush the process but once everything is done i'm gonna flip it turn it upside down and make sure it doesn't pour through the lid and that's the way to test for it so yeah i'm just gonna put this on the side the first batch is still really hot so you can imagine how you know these ones are and i already did this but then the sound would also tell you if it's sealed properly and there we go um ladies and gentlemen this is the end of my first cunning project and aside the broken one mason jar that went left i think it was a pleasant a pleasant experience and i learned and we would see how everything turns out i'm still waiting to kind of hear the pop once everything cools down that's how i know this is good to go into the cabinet and save this up so until next time thank you for joining me here in my kitchen and thanks for coming along on this journey with me so yeah thanks for joining me my name is Ade and again don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like to like until next time I'll see you again bye